If I had released this video as I originally planned, over a month ago, the conclusions would have been entirely different. Hey everybody, Reef Girl here and welcome to my channel. This video is about Aquachar. This product claims to do many things, including stabilizing pH in a saltwater aquarium at 8.2. But before we get to that, I'd love it if you take a minute and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. While you're there, hit that notification bell to be sure you're kept right up to date with everything I have coming your way in the next few months. So let's get started. First off, what is aquachar? Well, aquachar is a form of carbon. There are two types of carbon that we use. One is the pelletized processed form, activated carbon, and the other is charcoal. And aquachar is actually charcoal. Of course, charcoal is wood that has been burned, but not into ash. Aquachar is heated at a really high temperature that retains the original structure while removing all moisture and organics. It's extremely porous because of this treatment. We use carbon slash charcoal in our filter systems to remove undesirable substances from the water. This could be anything from excess medications to coral warfare, substances given off by some leather corals or just particulates to polish the water and keep it clear. Aquachar claims to do a couple of things that go beyond this. The Canadian distributor of Aquachar gave me enough to treat my roughly 100 gallons of system volume so that I could try it out. I agreed because Aquachar claims to be able to stabilize pH at 8.2 in a saltwater aquarium and I wanted to see if that would work. Further to this, they also claim that over time, Aquachar becomes a host to beneficial bacteria, thus forming part of a biofiltration system in the reef tank. I can't test for this, so I'm just going to leave it in my tank and who knows, maybe I'll notice a difference. So let's get this stuff ready to put in the tank. Each of these containers is one cup. The recommended treatment level is one cup per approximately 40 gallons of system volume. I wanted to try a little experiment. Doing the research into this product, I came across some videos of something they do at trade shows to prove that aquachar has an impact on pH. They get some water, put some pH reagent in it, and drop some aquachar in, and presto, the color changes, indicating that aquachar does have an impact on pH. So I decided to take liquid with a known pH of seven. This is calibration liquid that's used for my pinpoint pH probe and use it to do this test at home. As you can see here, no instant color change took place in the calibration fluid. I realized there might be a very faint color change that I just couldn't see without something to compare it to. So I put some solution in another vial and yes, the change was really, really slight. So I wondered if this was something that might be more obvious over time. I took both of these vials, sealed the two of them in a plastic Ziploc bag, and set them aside so that I could check back periodically and see if anything had changed. I'll come back to this later and show you what happened. Okay, back to getting this ready to put in the tank. I rinsed it several times in RO water to try and get it as clean as possible, although the instructions do say that a small amount of particulates left behind won't harm anything in the tank. I let it dry overnight. They recommend using a fine mesh bag so that water flows through it really well. I had to find a way to stand this upright in the spot I had for it in my sump, where I knew there was lots of good flow. So I decided to try inserting a piece of egg crate so that the aquachar could rest along both sides of it and it would keep it from all slumping to the bottom. First step is to fill the bag. Now I just have to slide in this piece of egg crate. Well, the teeth were catching on the bag, so I got this piece of cardboard to put between the egg crate and the bag, and it worked really well. Then I just had to distribute the aquachar on both sides of the egg crate to get it all evenly spread out. For my next trick, I'll use these two long zip ties to wrap around the entire package 
tighten them up really well, and that should keep the aquachar in place. Some trimming to tidy things up, and it's ready to go in the sump. To give it a fair test, I knew I would have to establish what my pH was before I added it to the tank. I decided to use my Wise Cam to run a 24-hour time-lapse. The time-lapse showed me that my pH for 24 hours hovered right around 8. Here's a quick peek at what that setup looked like. Here's the aquachar in my sump, located between the filter cups from the overflow and the massive mat of Kato that I have growing. This is a high flow area. Let's go back to the pH experiment. A couple of days later, this is what we have. There is a very, very slight difference in the color. So this proves to me that the aquachar did have an impact on the pH of the calibration fluid. Here's the 24 hour time lapse taken immediately after I put the aquachar into the sump. The claim is that within 48 to 72 hours, pH will stabilize at 8.2. Over the following week, I did several visual checks per day of the pH and I never saw it get close to 8.2. So I set up another time lapse. The results surprised me. Overall, the numbers were actually lower than before I put the aquachar into the tank. It looked like the pH was heading the wrong way. A few days later, I was ready to capture the final footage and do the wrap up. pH never reached 8.2 that I saw. Further, there are claims that the glass has to be cleaned less often with aquachar. I didn't find this to be true and was cleaning the glass just as often as I had been before. So I started putting together the video. And then circumstances intervened and our new grandson was born. I was away for almost a week and when I got back, I checked. And look at this, the pH read 8.24 on January the 16th. I was a little bit shocked to tell you the truth. It was another 10 days before I was home long enough to be able to set up another time lapse to capture the new readings. This proved to me that now the tank was benefiting from the aquachar. It was getting higher pH consistently over a 24 hour period. And now, several weeks later, it still is. So although it took a month to work instead of 48 to 72 hours, I'm satisfied it is working. This stuff's expensive, so it begs the question, is it worth paying the price to maintain this level of pH control? It's $30 per cup, that's Canadian dollars, plus tax and shipping if applicable. So over the year, I've calculated it out to be around $120 that it'll cost to keep replenishing it. Further to this, I'm going to leave what's there in there because if it does in fact augment my biofiltration, that's a good thing. I don't know though, whether I'll ever be able to tell if it's doing that. Overall, I'm satisfied it works. I'm willing to buy more. So it gets a thumbs up from me. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.